Hello and thanks for joining me once again for Life and Surround. Today we're talking about Aerosmith, Toys in the Attic, 2003 SACD. So it's my extra special pleasure to share this album with you and to review it. The 2003 SACD of Toys in the Attic by Aerosmith. In response to a couple of recent Life and Surround videos discussing out of print crazy prices. So I'll link those videos below. One of the titles discussed was Toys in the Attic by Aerosmith. And how somebody wants a thousand dollars for it and it has tended to go for well over a hundred dollars. A friend of mine from quadraphonicquad.com uh, sent me a message basically saying that he appreciates the Life and Surround channel and also uh, my service in the military. So this shirt's for you, and this review is for you. He asked that I don't go crazy with a thank you, so I'll just say thank you, John. I appreciate it very much. I had to promise not to flip this album, but to keep it as a cherished part of my collection, and I'm more than happy to do that, because the act of kindness is very special to me, and the point of this channel is to share my beloved hobby with as many people as possible and to increase other people's enjoyment and joy and for someone to reciprocate with some kindness. I'm touched and I'm very humbled and I'm very appreciative so um, I'm more than happy to share this album now with others. And here we see that it comes with a booklet. And among other things, it has what I assume is some of the original artwork, plus some artwork about the master tapes and stuff. It's got your SACD information. And then also, pretty sure that this replicates some of the original artwork. So, very cool booklet. And it also comes with this nifty explanation of SACD and DSD including proper speaker layout in case you didn't know so I love it when the early products have to kind of go some distance toward educating the public so the first thing to note is that this is not the original quad mix done back in the 70s I'm not sure of all the formats that that release received but I'm pretty sure it was Q8 and some form of LP you can find more information about the original quad release over on Quadraphonic Quad, particularly on this surround poll page, and I'll link that below. What happened was, around 2003, the original engineer on the Toys in the Attic project, Jay Messina, was given the chance to remix the album into modern 5.1 format. Though I'll do my best here to discuss the mix with you, I'm going to link an excellent Sound & Vision article where he describes the mixes himself. The cool thing about this 5.1 mix is it's not set and forget. Each track is tackled individually according to what the engineer felt was needed. So musically, what do we have here? The answer is a little bit of everything. Some people call this not only an Aerosmith album, but THE Aerosmith album. It's got some straight ahead rockers like the title track, which reminds me sort of of Queen's Sheer Heart Attack. It's got the ultra classic riffy catchy hit Walk This Way. It's got the more laid-back, chill hit, Sweet Emotion. It's got a humorous song in the form of Big 10-inch Record. And it's got your kind of piano-driven ballad in the form of Ain't Gonna See Me Crying. What's that one called? You See Me Crying. <laughs> and uh, Point Blank, I like it. I feel like some later era Aerosmith, like the 80s and 90s, gets a little bit formulaic and a little bit predictable. This really, from start to finish, changes speeds, changes feel, changes vibe, and um, it holds my interest for the entire length. It's fun. It rocks. So musically, it's a big win for me. Sonically, this album has received its share of criticism. 
there are those who are just fine with every moment on this record, and there are those who feel that sonically it's a bit uneven. I would say that I agree, it is a tad bit uneven, but I wouldn't go so far as some. To me it is satisfying at all points. I do feel like different things are done with vocal presence and with certain elements of the mix balance that make this album less cohesive than some, but again to me that kind of plays into the variety that you get and actually serves to draw me in and get me really listening and thinking about the album and sustains my interest for its entire length. The Mixology. Again, I recommend that you go read the article with Jay Messina for very detailed description of where things are placed and why he did what he did. But let's discuss it now as well. The now famous Life and Surround Mix Slides. So what you're going to tend to get is the lead vocal centered up in front, bass guitar centered up in front, the drums spread out along the stereo spectrum, mostly in the front of the room, and guitars one and two hanging back with you in the surrounds. This makes for a big sound, provides most of the parts on the album, a great deal of separation, and in general works very well. There are some notable exceptions to this motif including the song Adam's Apple, where the saxophone solo feels like it is right behind your head. I found that to be like very odd, but also just interesting, and as soon as I accepted it, like I find it to be a pretty cool effect. You also, on some songs, tend to have the main guitar parts diagonally panned from the surround left up to the front right. And sometimes it's the same guitar panning back and forth, and sometimes it's two different guitar parts. And it's used very effectively. So now let's look at Walk This Way. Again, you have the drums holding down that stereo spectrum in the front of the room, lead vocal where you would think it would be, bass holding down the center, per usual, which is just a good idea for any rock mix. It's gonna give you an even stereo image. Don't wanna mess with deep bass too much. You wanna leave it pretty much center in the mix. This time, you have that diagonal guitar feel that I was talking about. Guitar 1, Guitar 2 shifting from the surround left up to the front right. At times you have the guitar solo uniquely featured in the front right or in the front left. And you have the main guitars 1 and 2 hanging back with you in the surrounds. You need more cowbell? This song has cowbell. The cowbell here is featured prominently in the surround right, back there. It's hanging out with background vocals, and background vocals also round out the surround left, along with kind of a higher bell figure. So lots going on in Walk This Way that make it an interesting mix, and not only a riffy rock and track, but something with a lot of texture and a bit of a sophisticated arrangement. Let's also take a look at Sweet Emotion, because it is the other hit, and it also has quite a bit going on. This track also features that diagonally panned guitar motif, surround left up to front right. The drums are holding down the stereo spectrum. Vocals and bass are where they usually are. You have main guitar parts, sometimes occupying the front left, the center, or the front right at various times. You have harmony vocals prominently displayed in the surrounds. The talk box effect shifts back and forth between left and right surround. The backwards claps effect, which is what I think it is, that <laughs> also occupies the surrounds. During the solos, guitar one comes back and hangs out in the surround left, but otherwise is usually up in the front of the room. And my favorite instrument ever, if you have seen my Rush of Farewell to Kings review, the rattle slap. Probably used pretty much all over the place in the early 70s, but it made it into some mainstream rock. The rattle slap. I don't know what it is, but that is honestly just like my favorite sound in the entire pantheon of music. I love the rattle slap. So you get tons of rattle slap in Sweet Emotion. I totally love it. So between the backwards claps, the rattle slap, some shaker hanging out in surround left, uh, this track has a lot going on, again, another sophisticated arrangement, and it's a reason why Toys in the Attic is so much fun 
it's engaging. Jay Messina did an excellent job with this 5.1 mix. He didn't take a set and forget approach and I'm glad he didn't. He really listened for what each track needs. Sometimes putting Steven Tyler exclusively in the center channel or mainly in the center channel, a dry Steven Tyler. And then sometimes keeping him completely out of the center and having him mostly supported in the front left and right. Depending on whether it was more appropriate for him to blend in with the band or sit more on top of the band with more of a prominent vocal. So, you know, I really have like nothing but love for this album. I think it's really cool when the original engineer on a project like Elliot Shiner with Moondance or Eddie Kramer with Electric Ladyland gets called back and they do a fresh 5.1 mix because they have an understanding of the material. They were there when it was recorded. They were there when it was originally mixed. They know the success of the original mix and maybe they have harbored some wishes over time that they could have done more with it. And it's just very special to me when the original engineer meets up with this material later and brings it forward into my beloved surround hobby. It's one of the coolest things that this hobby has going, in my opinion. So how would I vote? I'm going to go over to Quadraphonic Quad and cast my vote. Toys in the Attic SACD is garnering right around uh, an average of 8. And I'm going to throw in my lot at 9. Here I go, I'm going to vote 9. And I'm going to shave off just a little bit for the inconsistency of some of the sound. And just because I don't think it should be very often that we hand out 10s, because that's just perfection, that's as good as it possibly gets. I don't think this is perfect, but it is extremely enjoyable. I'm glad that I promised to always keep it in my collection because it's worth it. It's totally a keeper. It's something that I'm going to return to for my enjoyment from time to time. Again, thank you, John. And you know, this isn't the only gift that I've ever received in regard to this channel. I am planning on getting around to some others in due time. So if you're watching and you have made some sort of a gesture or a gift toward the channel, I'm not trying to snub you, I just haven't got to it yet. There are dozens and dozens upon dozens of ideas for videos for this channel already, and I'm trying to get to them. Sometimes timely issues like Abbey Road Atmos comes up, but I am basically on a mission to share some very cool topics and some very cool albums with you as we go. So don't forget to hit like, don't forget to hit subscribe, the notification bell. Leave comments, let me know what you think about Toys in the Attic SACD. Hopefully um, more Aerosmith will come out in this format eventually. There's also Rocks and Get Your Wings that are available, not to mention the original quad mix of Toys in the Attic. Maybe Dutton Vocalion can step in and give us those three extant original quad mixes in a lossless digital format. That would be very cool. So thank you for watching to this point, and until next time, live life in surround.